Bobby Lee was on Bobby Kelly's You Know What You Did podcast and he had a really decent interview and his clip's kind of gone viral and everyone's obviously speaking about it. And I feel like this is super, super interesting in terms of giving us an insight into what's happened post um, Bobby Lee, Kalila, Brendan Gate, where that whole affair went down, where Brendan allegedly, I think it kind of, no, sorry, it started all because Kalila let it slip that Brendan, she didn't name him, but somebody that is matching Brendan's description kind of DM'd her, sent her DMs in a way to kind of, you know, get at her and try and fuck and stuff. And obviously she turned it down. Obviously, you know, it being bad because she was dating or going out with, um, flipping Bobby Lee at the time that caused a whole drama with, with Anne Liederman also, who kind of exposed maybe that same person who matched Brendan's description was a person behind a truck walk, which then led to the back and forth with Bobby Lee, which then led to maybe Bobby Lee and Kalila breaking up and the drama around that and that obviously infamous interview where flipping Brennan Shaw goes on Tiger Belly and asks them how to de define bullying right so it was a really big affair at the time and it's kind of you know it's kind of died down now and everyone's kind of moved on their separate ways you know Kalala and Bobby Lee have broken up and it seems like Brennan Shaw and Brian Cannon have basically been excommunicated from the LA comedy scene have you guys noticed that ever since that Bobby Lee thing happened you don't really see those LA podcast guys associating with or hanging out with Brian Cannon or Brendan Shaw or even going on a fire and a kid like when's the last time Tom Segura went on there I know Burt Crash went on there once but you know I feel like he's a little bit like Bobby Lee he's a bit of a people please they probably found it hard to say no but I can't really think of anyone else in that scene who's kind of gone on there um Andrew Santino hasn't obviously Bobby Lee hasn't um, it's kind of been a bit quiet so clearly people in the scene have chosen their sides and more people sided with Bobby Lee than sided with Brendan Shaw and Brian anyway Bobby Lee went on Bobby Kelly's podcast and basically spoke about it and really revealed some interesting things. Number one, regarding his relationship now with Brendan Shaw and Brian Callum, which I thought was really interesting to kind of listen to. So let's play this clip now. What's next, Max? Okay, so David Knox asks if your brother's going to be on Tiger Belly again. Well, he, my brother just did Bad Friends. He did? It comes out this week. Oh, great. Yeah, and it's the funniest episode we've done. Aside from Andrew, I mean, all the Andrew ones are great, but this one with my brother yeah. is wild. Okay, good. And it comes out this week. And um, is your brother in the business? He has a podcast with Jeremiah Watkins called. Um, oh, I know who he is. Yeah. Why would you ask that then? Because I, I didn't know that was your brother. That's my brother, Steve. No shit. Yeah. I didn't, no, I never met him. Yeah, so Steve um, has one called Scissor Brothers with Jeremiah. Yeah, I love Jeremiah. And, um, and my brother won't be on tiger belly for a while why i can't get into it really yeah did he hit you no did i you love fight? him very much did you fight you fought whoever the guy that asked the question yeah is trying to stir problems really now the interesting thing about this is that if i'm not mistaken the theory goes that stevie was the one responsible for leaking the information that Kalila liked to get you know trains around on her or she likes to gang bang or she likes to be in an open relationship regardless of what her sexual proclivities are but basically leak the news to everybody else outside of Bobby Lee and Kalila that Kalila likes hooking up with other dudes for whatever reason and that was the information that was kind of fed back to Brendan that he basically used to kind of hold over Bobby Lee's head in a weird way I feel like to justify him signing in her DMs that's my feeling because I, I get I, that's what I feel like but I, I know when BGL mentioned it also I'm not too sure if Stevie told BGL and then BGL and told Brendan but at the time Stevie was kind of working with Brendan on um, King of the Sting they were kind of you know he kind of would jump in and be like a guest host on there sometimes even though they really you know didn't really shy away from kind of mocking him to his face and kind of taking a piss out of him you know these LA guys will do anything for a check so he basically put his principles morals and pride to one side and let them kind of you know take the piss out of him live on air which I thought was sad because you know I quite like Stevie and I think he's pretty funny and whatever it may be but um that whole happened and that kind of led to obviously Bobby Lee and Stevie kind of breaking down relationship wise but just imagine the chaos that these guys cause Brian Cannon and Brendan Shaw their inability to just be able to just handle the slightest bit of criticism and maybe some gentle ribbing and mocking online has led to them basically indirectly ruining relationships between two brothers who at before that were pretty close 
despite you know there may be issues they had growing up or whatnot they seem pretty close on camera and stuff and they'd always be on the show together blah 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 so imagine what that must do especially in your older age right these kind of things i'd imagine probably hurt more i think when you have a, a sibling and you have some sibling clashes and whatnot in arguments when you're younger it's one thing but when you feel like your sibling maybe betrayed you when you're you know of age and you're over the age of flipping 18 over eight, over the age of 20 30 40 it must hurt a little bit more because you must feel like it's personal it must be kind of the thing that maybe would you know mean that you never speak to that person again it goes really deep and maybe it affects extended families absolutely wild absolutely wild and um it's just amazing just to see again the trail of destruction that they basically left in their wake it's absolutely insane i feel like but hey what can you do when it comes to these things what can you do i'm not surprised that all this is happening in the slightest and considering it and i've said before at the time i think i never really understood why it was such an issue for others anyway what Kalila likes to get up to is bobby lee's relationship like if anybody should be upset or annoyed of their partner wanting to go and hook up with other dudes it should be bobby lee he's the one in a relationship i don't know why other people were taking up for him especially considering the guy's like 50 years old or something right he's an older dude he's not some young guy if he's willing to kind of get cucked or he doesn't mind you know get taken advantage of it's just his problem really i don't understand why every anyone really cared about it or kind of try to make out like flipping kalala was some mastermind manipulator maybe again let's let's kind of give those guys benefit of the doubt maybe she is a master manipulator Maybe all those poems that she writ were some sort of master plan to take over the male race. We don't know. Whatever. Cool. Let's just say all those things are true. She's evil. She's manipulative. She's psychotic. Cool. If that's the case, this is still Bobby Lee's relationship he has to deal with at the time. It's his responsibility to deal with it. His responsibility to get out of it. His responsibility to address it and deal with it whatever way he wants to deal with it. It's not anybody else's. I just feel like everyone kind of taking up for him and or maybe attacking Kalala was just odd to me in my opinion again i think it's more it makes more sense to not like her as a personality like for instance i'm i'm a i'm one of those guys i used to love tiger belly but towards the end i started getting pissed off for tiger belly mostly because the kalala was annoying she just kind of she's a bit of a vibe killer like how christina pajinski was in some of the good parts of kind of your mom's house podcast she'd kill the vibe she'd kind of be a fun stopper just I mean she's just not someone that you wanted to listen to on a podcast and often and you know the real talent were well, obviously the main host on the show tom segura obviously on his one and bobby lee on his one and she just got annoying as a personality but i never actually cared what she gets up to in the bedroom it's not my concern it doesn't influence me or affect me in the slightest and even if it is directly influencing flipping bobby lee so what he has to deal it is his household but i just felt that kind of turn against her was interesting to see but maybe it's because most dudes have interacted or come across someone like a Kalila. maybe i'm lucky in that regard i've never had an interaction with a woman like that who kind of you know maybe would kind of slip in and take advantage of you and maybe kind of ride your fame to kind of make her own plan. i've never had that happen to my entire life um you know i'm a nobody in the first place anyway for anyone to try and win clout of me it's not going to work because you know i need all the clout that i can get so that's never a, a case fair play but i just thought it was a little bit overblown the reaction against her because i felt like in my opinion it was mostly bobby lee's relationship she had to deal with but it is still sad to hear that the whole brendan and brian and clara thing negative affected their relationship it's just you know as brothers it's just a bit sad but anyway continue hey yeah wow i don't like people who stir problems you don't like stirring next problems. question so you, you got in a fight with your brother no i love my brother go ahead but you get into a fight i don't know see this is why okay i want why the rattle comes out i won't i won't the rattle. If you ask me again, the rattle. I won't ask you that again. All right. But you guys are good. Okay. No, I'm just. No, 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 Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. I'll I tell was you a, right now, dude. Yeah, it was a different You're question. Around, okay, stop. I will. Let die. it go. I'm, dude. I'm out. I'm Let out. Let it go. The I'm rattle. Out. I'm not gonna lie. I think someone's saying here, Howells. Uh, so he said it. It's because Hall said it's because he's um, Bobby gives this vulnerable vibe. So his friends got protective. Um, he's basically a kid in some ways. I know that's the case, but I have to be honest and say, my love hate relationship with. What's his face with Burt Kreischer and Bobby Lee is mostly because of that. There's something that kind of grates me about, um, maybe it's because of my own kind of, um, non realized potential and dreams. I don't really know, but there's something that I don't really respond well to. And it's like adults that act like children. It's always annoyed me. Like guys that kind of act like they've got no care in the world. It just kind of gets on my nerves. Like, why don't you have a care in the world? Why don't you have anywhere to be? Why are you just like frolicking around? 
Do you know what I mean? Like, like I always feel like everything needs a time and a place. There should be a time and a place where you are acting like a kid, when you're an actual kid. But then when you become a grown up, this whole like pretending to be Peter Pan thing is just a little bit annoying after a while. I know it's different because these guys are in LA. And again, LA and Hollywood is a whole different, you know, world in itself. And maybe the industry you're in, maybe kind of tr- pushes you to keep. Because I think there's a part of creativity where you kind of have to be somewhat you know adolescent in your brain you have to be a little bit silly goosey right you can't be too grown up and too proper and you can't be too like boring and be the kind of person that doesn't find fart jokes funny you kind of have to kind of keep that silly bit about you but i just feel like there's sometimes there's come a time and point where you're like okay let's just stop the act and just grow up a little bit do you know what i mean bobby lee's like a big man like how old is bobby lee he must be like in his 50s legit in his 50s and he and he legitimately has a brain of what a 17 year old like, I don't think that's cool. Unless he legitimately has a mental issue or something. And then, okay, hands up. The guy's 51 years old. Like, come on, man. 51 years old. He was born in 1971. Like, this is an old, old man. Like, like Jeremy, you know I mean? again, maybe I'm, I'm overthinking it and I'm being a little bit too harsh on the guy, but I think you should maybe grow up a little bit. And I think that kind of infantile thing and that baby and thing, um, and we will have to kind of partake in it and pretend, you know, we give it. It's just like, come on. Like, let it off. Oh, yeah, big up Indian dude. I mean, this whole Rogan verse are adults who have emotional arrested development, a sort of perpetual infantilism. Yeah, exactly that Indian dude. Thank you for that super chat. Perpetual infantilism. I just don't, I don't know. I just don't respond to it well. I guess maybe it's different because I'm a guy who kind of balances my creative life with my work life. Like I've always liked doing that. I've always liked to be able to work a nine to five and then use the funds for my nine to five to buy microphones, to buy webcams, to buy computers so I can stream and stuff, do this on this hobby on the side. And if it builds up something full time, fair enough. But I like that balance. And I guess because I've got that balance, I can't be silly goosey all the time because I have to wake up in the morning and go to work. Right? There's always that kind of thing, that, that kind of grown up side in your brain. But I just feel like that kind of constant infantilism, that constant infancy, whatever it is, it's just annoying and grating. It's hard to kind of get with. And I guess Bert Crash has got it a little bit. He's like, you know, he's perpetually living this kind of frat boy fantasy thing in his head and he's never given it up. And the same kind of goes with Bobby Lee. He's that kind of, you know, doe face, cute face guy, fresh face from the comedy scene, eager to impress in LA and whatnot that he was when he first arrived in the scene. It's like, no, you're not. You're you're an old school veteran now you've been in the game for a long time um everything that you'll achieve and you've got now you should get because you're one of the better comics in your scene there everyone likes and respects you I mean, you're going to kind of own your shit a little bit and just kind of accept it and grow up and maybe that would kind of seep into your relationships also because who knows maybe someone like a Kalala sees him as an easy mark because of the fact that he's you know stuck in his constant as um what you call it as the as that indian dude said he's constantly stuck in this like emotional arrested development thing i just don't know man i just don't like it personally it's just a thing with me it just i always react weird to it because it just makes me feel like come on man you're a grown-up like, act like a grown-up but anyways go ahead to the video next uh, question all right uh saying z rage says ask him about uh brendan schwab and brian Callen threatening see, him see there we go they threaten you I mean, it's just like you just like to stir up the fuck. Buddy, I'm not asking these. <laughs> yeah, fuck- your people did. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Do I know the questions before they come in? No, I just have them in front of me. Okay, I don't know why they threaten you. Because you, 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 now you're opening up. I mean, think about the refrigerator. Can you cover your stomach? <laughs> no, please. You're being rude. I, you're being fucking rude. I'm right just now. saying your stomach's out. I don't want you to look at it later. Go, hey, can you cut that out where my stomach was out? Because I don't like the way it looks. All right. I know how you LA comics get. Oh, right, so what? You, you're opening up a window. I'm kidding. And a door. That was a no, joke. The, the Brendan Shop thing. Oh, this thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you get. That, it's it's a whole. It's. Oh, let me say something. Why would they threaten you? That those are macho big guys that it really could hurt somebody. Why would they threaten you? Oh man, it's such a big thing, man. Just tell me the little version. There is no little version. What did you do? <laughs> I didn't do anything. Bobby. Fuck you, man. Okay, wait a second. There's been a lot of people that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. There's been a lot. You can't. You have. You're afraid of intimacy. I'm, dude, I do this. Dude, now that's not. That's gay. That's gay. That's gay. All right. That's not intimate. All right. This is intimate. I do this. Though. No, that's gay. Well, stop it. Stop okay. doing this. this stop is, doing this. Okay. All right. Well, you, Bobby got generally worried there. Like, please don't touch my penis. I beg of you. <laughs> this is. This is actually good. Um, dig joke humor. You know how Brendan and Brian always try and talk about dig jokes. It's always come to cause cringe and try hard. This is actually genuinely funny. Because these are two genuinely funny guys. <laughs> All right. Let me ask. So what, so what you're trying okay, to do is I'm just asking, what did what happened? What was your part of it? There is no part. You didn't they just threaten you. Let's beat up Bobby. 
Because if I were to fucking even get into it right now, it's mm-hmm. gonna st- start the war again, and okay. it's died down. Okay, so they don't really want to hurt you. No, I just have to say this: <laughs> is that my relationship with those two guys are pretty much done. Really? Yes. I thought you were friends with them. No. Oh no. No. That stinks. It's getting easier. You know what I mean? I think Brendan texted me the other day. I texted him back. Oh, that's good. A very abrupt text back. What was it? Watch your back? No, he's like, I have a job thing for you. Oh, cool. And I go, nah. And that was pretty much it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He had a job for you and you said no. It was like an ad thing or whatever, an opportunity for me. But I was just like, nah, I'm not interested. Was it good money? It was okay. Was it for a product you didn't like? No, it was fine. Oh. Yeah, I just, right now I'm not uh, ready to do business with them. Really? Yeah. Okay. I love that. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually happy to hear that because for whatever reason, I had a feeling that some way in some weird parallel universe or some weird reality, Bobby Lee would be put in a position where he'd have to apologize to Brendan and Brian, even though he did nothing wrong. Like he'd have to go and apologize to them and grovel to them and kind of, you know, get at their feet and be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and get back in their good graces. They'd have a podcast together where they try to pretend they were all friends and everything was kind of, you know, they buried the hatchet and move on and try and use it as a bit to kind of, you know, make cool content and make more money and make merch and all this sort of stupid stuff. And you can understand why he would do that if he did do that. I'm glad he didn't, but you can understand why. Because of the association um, of Brian and Brendan with Joe Rogan and how obviously now we've known how, you know, Bobby Lee basically revealed that Brian Callum was screaming at him on the phone during that whole Kalala drama and basically attacking him and kind of threatening him with Joe Rogan and stuff and weird shit. It kind of revealed a little thing that we now know that those guys basically lauded the fact that they were Joe Rogan's friends on their colleagues who weren't Joe Rogan's friends or who weren't maybe as close to Joe Rogan as they were. They basically knew that that association basically gave them the license to act like absolute pricks and absolute cunts of people and basically act like they're better than people, intimidate them and act like it's a boys club. And I knew that's the case because I remember when I used to listen to Tiger Belly, there used to be a, a time where a certain comedian would get onto the show. And remember there was a time when everybody was repeating this flipping mantra, this line, oh, the comedy store has never been better. The scene is so good. Blah, blah, blah. Remember, I think Joe Rogan started it, but it was a constant flipping saying they all had. The comedy store has never been better. There's so many murderers. Everyone's swearing. Blah, blah, blah. Bobby Lee's podcast was the only time I heard people kind of throwing some, you know, water on that. And he would say something along the lines of, oh, it's good, but not as, you know, but it's a bit hard to kind of navigate because it's a bit of a boys club. And he basically make it sound like he felt uncomfortable, like as if like he couldn't really hang with the guys because they were really different as people. Maybe they intimidated him, but he always say everyone was nice, but he kind of, you know, he let it known that there was kind of like an in crowd and an out crowd. So it's clear from that phone call and from what we know that Bobby said about it and how Brian kind of basically admitted to doing it, that clearly those guys used the fact that they were associated with and friends with Rogan for such a long time and part of his inner circle, they basically used that as kind of a wing to flex on people. So in any other situation, I'd understand if Bobby decided, hey, for the betterment of my career and to make sure that I'm not feeling uncomfortable in these clubs and these green rooms and to just give me the possibility to go on Rogan again, I'm just going to get on my knees and say sorry to two guys who I shouldn't say sorry to. I'd be understanding if he did do it, but I'm happy he didn't. I'm so glad he didn't do it and he stuck to his gun because he def- genuinely didn't do anything wrong. He got accused of being the mastermind behind the flipping, the fire in the kid subreddit, which is absolutely ridiculous. If you listen to the guy at any level of time, you can tell he's not pretending to be an infant. He clearly is someone that is an adult, uh, you know, a, a flipping, an infant in an adult's body, clearly. And he doesn't really have any understanding about working those kind of things and be able to mastermind such a big effort. It's just ridiculous to even, even imagine it in your head in the slightest. And what was his crime? for being in a relationship with an attractive woman. That's basically his crime. His crime was being somebody, which I think was what happened also. I think his crime was being somebody that a lot of guys in the comedy scene never rated. They look at him like a cuck. They look at him like a weasel. They think he's ugly. They just he's small, he's short, he's Asian, whatever. All those things, I think, made them think, how the fuck did he end up with Kalila? And that, that little seed of how the fuck kind of 
you know, it grew into a plant that turned into the flipping Kalila and, and thingy drama. I think so. That's my, again, far fetched theory. I have no knowledge of anything. I'm just a random dude in London talking out my ass, but that's where I kind of stand on it. Like that kind of like bitter jealousy of like, Oh, how did he end up with a hot girl? And they kind of, you know, it then it kind of permeated into them kind of flexing on him and then blaming him for all that sort of stuff. And the 300 pages of flipping, you know, source code and HTML code that they used to have the evidence on him. Absolutely stupid. So he did nothing wrong, but I'm glad to hear that he's not speaking to them. But it's also interesting to know that Brendan's doing that thing that he always does, that love bombing thing, where he basically will go out of his way to be super nice to you so that he can kind of inoculate and protect himself from any accusation of being a piece of shit. And I always have the, I always had the inkling that it was definitely a thing that he did calculate thing. Because if you remember before, when, when the hate maybe wasn't as bad as it is now, there would always be prominent people that first kind of came across to firing a kid early, like maybe Tim Dillon or something, or Mark Norman, who would say stuff like, I don't understand why people don't like Brendan, he's really nice. The reason why they would say that was because behind the scenes, Brendan would go out of his way to be really nice to those kind of guys. I don't know, maybe he would recommend them something, maybe he would send them a ad, you know, an ad read, recommend, maybe he'd introduce them to somebody at some ad read place, which is putting money in their pocket. Maybe he'd say a good word about them to a particular club booker, but all of these people he was kind of doing these kind of selfless acts for were guys who were basically better than him and on the trajectory to become bigger. So it kind of made him look good that he was helping these kind of big guys. But it was also an interesting and cool way. It's an interesting, clever way, manipulative way to sort of inoculate himself from hate so that those big guys be like, no, no, Brendan's all right, man. He's a good guy. He kind of did this. He did this for me. It's like, yeah, because you're bigger than him. If you're, if you're lower than him, he's not going to do that for you at all in the slightest. And I think once those guys realize who he actually, Brendan actually was, now you don't hear Brendan, now you don't hear people like Mark Norman or Tim Dillon running defense for Brendan anymore. You don't hear them basically saying, oh, this guy's fine. You guys are overreacting. He's a cool dude. He does all this, does all that. They're kind of a bit mute on it or like Tim Dillon, they'll sometimes throw some heat out there. So I, I, I find it funny that he's doing that now after all the damage he's caused to Bobby Lee and Kalila and their relationship. And just the reputation, everything he did, he still had the guts and the gumption to kind of text him and try to act like everything was okay. Like, who do you think you are, man? Like, these guys are awful, awful, awful humans.